So first of all, in, in Bangladesh, my, my first recommendation actually would be to, to, to get more uh, data, to get a deeper sense of understanding of what is driving the C-section or what are the factors and also to understand what are the relative contribution of the different factors and which we have to target first and where we, are ex we, where we can kind of uh, expect to get the best possible results. And again, we have to be very cautious in the fact that even though there are high medically unnecessary cesarean sections, it doesn't mean that every woman who needs C-section in Bangladesh is getting it. So there is a significant proportion of them who are not getting it. So therefore, if we rationalize the cesarean sections, the amount of resources that we may be able to save will help to, to give cesarean sections to those who still uh, are not getting it. So, you know, it really has to be seen from the rationalizing dimension. So, uh, and I just go back to that point I made in terms of any intervention that we, we should, we try to do should be based on evidence. And where we do not have evidence, we should be investing in operations research, implementation science to understand before we scale it up. So before coming up with a, with a whole lot of activities together. So in terms of evidence, there are clearly globally, there are at least three uh, interventions that have proven to be successful, but in varying degrees. So one is the, the midwifery led care model. And often you see uh, in, in several uh, Scandinavian countries, which have managed to keep the cesarean section rates to, to very low levels, have, have got robust midwifery led care uh, models. So clearly that's one, uh, one proven intervention and Bangladesh is trying to get there and scale up that. So we are in the right direction there. The second uh, intervention that is proven is, uh, is to be able to, uh, to provide feedback. So in several institutions and several doctors themselves do not know what their C-section rates are. Simple bulletins in terms of just indicating what the C-section rates are on, um, of different hospitals and even different doctors kind of makes them realize and, and helps them to rationalize the C-section decision making itself. And the third intervention that is proven to be uh, effective is uh, is to get a second opinion. So at the time of, uh, of C and a decision for a C-section has been made preliminarily, so then it is consulted with, uh, with one another expert to check if the decision is right. And often in, uh, in those circumstances, it helps to kind of rationalize the decision making. So basically, we're really looking at three evidence proven interventions and these are the starting point uh, in terms of where we, our focus should be. And in all the other areas, we should really try to, to gain more uh, evidence. The way this, um, uh, this whole issue is looked at, you know, cannot be only seen from a regulatory point of view and it should not be a kind of a blame only on as if the doctors uh, and the obstetricians are driving the cesarean section. And as I already outlined, you know, there is a complex interplay of factors of health system providers and the patients which comes into, uh, into existence, but also, uh, also the macroscopic environment, including the fertility rates in, in the country and also the, the cost of living in the country and what kind of uh, incentives are provided to, 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 to doctors to, to do practice. So it's a complex interplay of, of factors. And therefore to assume that only a regulatory approach uh, will, will kind of help to, to reduce the cesarean section rate may be very, very narrow. And, and, and regulation, regulatory work does not work in vacuum on only one condition of cesarean section. So you're really talking about regulation at a much larger scale in terms of how healthcare services are provided. Giving an example in terms of unnecessary investigations, who actually gets um, an MRI or a CD scan, who gets a cardiac bypass, bypass surgery, who gets an angioplasty. All these are not kind of you know regulated in a way. So therefore assuming that we will be able to regulate cesarean section alone may not kind of take us uh, a long way but what's important is to is to see what we can what we can do to motivate what we can do to encourage the the, uh, the medical fraternity and also the health system as a whole to be able to provide the right evidence based uh, and fully respecting the rights of women what kind of care can be provided should be based on um, on, on, on good evidence and understanding the, the needs and, and, and that will be only done through an encouraging, motivating approach rather than a, than a regulatory approach.